Our group of 19 members were given a task to measure and document the Royal Sunwell Club building. To get a deeper insight about the club, we were given the opportunity to interview Mr. Sashi, the present manager, and Mr. Robert, a past member of the club. The Royal Slango Club was built in 1884. The Padang was once leased to the Royal Slango Club, who used the grounds for various sports such as cricket and rugby. In 1987, the Padang was taken back by the City Hall, and in return, the Slango Club was given a piece of land in Bukit Kara. This reclamation had caused the Royal Sangal Club to lose its original identity and purpose. The club is now, I think, has lost a lot of its meaning. By meaning, I mean this. Before, the activities of the club and all the windows looked out onto a sports ground to watch cricket. When cricket moved to Bukit Kiara, the whole meaning of the club changed. Tucked away from the hustle and bustle of the city, the Royal Selangor Club provides a peaceful and relaxing atmosphere. The contrasting divide between the end of the road and the entrance makes the place stand out. As you walk into the Royal Selangor Club, an impressive dining hall with an 8 meter high ceiling greets the visitor, giving the hall an open and spacious feel. The hall uses some softscape decoratives to create privacy within the space, as it does not use walls. To access the main facilities of the club, members have to walk through a spatial transition from the dining hall and into a narrow long corridor. Behind the walls of this corridor lies many surprises and at the same time providing privacy to those spaces. At the end of the corridor, you experience another transition from a narrow to a wider expanse. The hash bar is spacious, but the walls that enclose the space borrows it a sheltered look that feels private. The hash bar sports a curved glass wall, a centerpiece that counters and softens the sharp angles of the building, another element of surprise. Throughout the 133 years of the club's existence, many changes have taken place. As the people adapted to the club, the club too has adapted and assimilated with its location and the Malaysian culture. The club can also be seen as a cultural front in KL through which British colonial culture was introduced. Bar hopping, squash, darts and billiards. Over the years, as the number of British members reduced, there was a rise in the number of Malaysian members. This in turn naturally pushed the club to adapt and cater to Malaysians by providing local, Indian and Chinese cuisines, a more localized approach. It was only logical to build the RSC in a style that reflected what was relevant to the British during the time. Presently, the style of the building is a mock style of Tudor era houses. During the Tudor era, stained glasses were used as a decorative element in churches. This can also be seen integrated into the main doors of the multipurpose hall in the Royal Sangal Club. The glass window at the dining hall are glass panels overlaid with translucent stickers to mimic the stained glass windows of the time. Most of the windows found in the Royal Sangal Club are paint, which is a common element in Tudor era houses. The cornices are not from the Tudor era, but one of the architectural elements that were used by the British in the later buildings. The facade of the building strongly resembles the Tudor Revival style with the black brackets and mock half-timber framing. In addition to that, tiled roofs are also a common architectural element that can be seen. In Tudor houses, timbers are used for the roof structure. For the Royal Slango Club, timbers are used for the rafters and purlins, but instead steel structures were used for the trusses. Originally, the trusses were made of wood, but in 1970, RSC was raised to the ground. And so with safety in mind, the change to utilize materials with fire retardant properties came about. Pitch roofs are also used in archetypical Tudor common house architecture. As time passes, the essence of the club has changed. What was once alive and burning with passion, invoked by the fervor of sportsmen and rowdy crowds at sundown, have now calmed into glowing embers, kept alive only by the distant memories of what was. The RSC is but a place for socializing, events for businessmen and other formal affairs. The club seems to have lost its true purpose, its soul. Will the club have a second chance in reviving its past? Or would it remain an empty symbol of status exclusively for the elite? 
Explain the facade but interesting spaces. Pretty good. It was fun learning how to help coordinate with the groups. Fun but tiring experience. <laughs> Aesthetic and detailing. They are not really well coming. A very British feeling building. Interesting culture. Peaceful space. I love the hash bar. 